Well, good morning. We're so excited uh, to share today and to open up this first week of Stories of Life Change. Uh, with us on the platform today, we have Josh Atkins and Kayla Atkins. Let's give it up for them. You got to give them a minute, you know, just to settle in. It's a little unnerving. You come out and, and there's these lights here and it just takes a second to get comfortable. Your request was no couch, so we went no couch. Didn't want to make you feel like you were in, you know, the counseling session. Uh, but we went chairs today. But um, really, what I want to bring out through this whole uh, series of Stories of Life Change is the fact that everybody has a story, and everybody's story matters. And we want to talk about just perspective as well on how God has worked in individuals' lives. And a lot of you guys may know Josh and Kayla. Some of you may not know anything about them at all. Uh, Josh runs the Fresh Start Center out here every service, and uh, just God has done a great and mighty work in both their lives uh, individually and also collectively as marriage. And we, we thought, you know, since it was Valentine's Day today that we would really kind of hit on marriage and on relationships. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. You guys are the two <laughs> craziest people God hath made up here. <laughs> He's like, Mike's how, did on. Get, how did you even get that microphone on? Mike's also, on. Also, you know, I want to teach There's you about this microphone. Button. It's a condenser mic. So let me, let me teach you about right this here. microphone. Yeah, you're, you're probably good right there. You may have busted a few eardrums. I'm not uh, sure. I'm going to rock it But it's it okay. Out. It's okay. Um, but God's done a great and awesome work in their life. And, you know, some of you may know their story. Some of you may not. And each week we want to highlight a different part uh, of everybody's story. And, and this week we're really going to talk about relationship and marriage. And God's done an awesome work in them. I think sometimes what the perspective or the, the concept you get of people when you see them is like, oh, you know, they must be perfect. And we already know that Josh isn't already. Just from one line, we know that he's not. Uh, you know, so you might think this, oh, look at their marriage, it's fantastic. Look at these individuals, God's moving in them. And as we We're know. wretches. Right, that's right. There's a story behind everyone. Um, so I, <laughs> this is great. This is so fantastic right now. We were joking last night. It's like, so what happens if we break out in a fight right in the middle? I was like, let it happen. We'll work it out, and it'll just be a part of the service. So this is not scripted. I do have questions that I'll let them in on. Um, but some of the things, as you know, I, I already told you that I'm just going to like, boom, I'm going to pull it out of you, and we're going to get real open and honest. So what I want to start with, um, I'll start with Josh, because we know he likes to talk as well. And uh, I will start with uh, question number one. And I know on, on the paper you got, it says, what got you thinking about God or attending church? But also what I want to say is uh, share a little bit about your journey in coming to know Jesus. Well. Briefly. Um, yeah, <laughs> briefly, Josh. That's why I went first. Um, I was raised in church, kind of uh, early childhood on. I knew, you know, we went to church. That was the thing we did. Kind of uh, standard by the book uh, way of life as a young Christian. We just kind of went to church, went through the motions. I didn't really know anything about like a true relationship with Christ till later on. Uh, but yeah, most of my early childhood was, was based in church. Uh, we attended, I think it was Church of Christ. So pretty hardcore. Um, but, uh, I knew, I, I feel like as a, at an early age, I knew of the Lord. I just didn't really know like till later on. And obviously we'll get to that later on, but, um, about a true relationship with God and, and with what that meant. And, um, like I said, I, uh, I was raised in church. Um, uh, my parents at that time, you know, growing up, up until 12, I think uh, they got divorced when I was 12. Um, was kind of a chaotic home life, chaotic situation. So going to church and then kind of seeing, you know, no fault of my mother who's here tonight. Love her heart. But uh, <laughs> dad's not here. But, uh, you know, have, going through that as a child and then, you know, being raised in church and then, you know, kind of chaos on the home front, it, it kind of was confusing probably as a child now that I look back and, you know, but I did, I, I, I am thankful for the fact that I even went to church because um, without that, I wouldn't have even really probably been drawn to that later on. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into that. But yeah, that's, my beginning was in church. Yeah, so you're classic, you go to church. You yeah, know. it just kind of by the book. You, you know, don't really standard. know the relationship aspect. No, no, you know, as a kid, and, and then you kind of confuse because your life's chaos and <clears throat> everything around you kind of like, what's this doesn't make sense. So at 12, you weren't praying at the altar for people? No, and, no. And worshiping no, the Lord yeah. with hands raised? My, yeah. <laughs> no. My, okay. my example, at, you know, like I said, and I know he's not here to defend himself, but that's okay. That's 
being real and honest here. My dad, he, he was not the example. Now that I have children now, I can really see uh, the lack of example he was of a, of a godly man, a Christian man. Um, you know, not just going to church, but actually living that life outside of the four walls. And um, thankfully, my mom, my loving, godly little mother over there, she uh, uh, instilled a lot in me, and, and I'm thankful for that. So. All right, Kayla. And then Kayla. Yes. Is this good? It's good. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I was not raised in church at all. Um, so we went to a Methodist church on Christmas and Easter. We were the Creasters. And Cassie and I, like, uh, we just laughed the whole time because the Methodist, the uh, preacher, or the pet. Anybody ever laugh in church before? Yeah. We got in so much Every trouble. Sunday. Listen, yeah. we, we, ha we had someone that used to pray really long over the offering. And for some reason, <laughs> me and my brother and, and other, yeah. and I'm just letting you know what your pastor used to do. But we would look up and we'd be like, Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. Go ahead. No, yeah, and once you start, it's like once those laughs that start, they can't stop. So that was our church experience, really. Um, and But I do remember, like, in high school, and this is weird now, not weird, that I look back at it, though, like, when I would go through, like, what I thought was the end of the world and heartbreaks and stuff like that, I remember in high school, like, in my bedroom in the basement, I would cry out, and I'd be like, God, why are you doing this to me? I didn't know anything about God, but like something in me, I don't know, I still talk to him sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I was 18 and I graduated in 2007 and I had family from Tennessee who were saved and we made fun of them, you know, because I didn't know anything other than they were just Jesus freaks and they, you know, we just always, when they came around, we're like, don't say cuss words and stuff like that. And <laughs> so they came up for, love it. They came up for my graduation and um, invited me back to that summer. They wanted, my uncle was a youth pastor and he wanted me to come down and spend time with them. And so I did. I was supposed to go to the Arts Institute of Pittsburgh. I was leaving in just a couple months. And then he, he like begged me to come down. So I went down there and spent some time with them. And I was supposed to come home, but they were going on a youth trip. And I was like, man, I really want to go on that. Just because it was uh, whitewater rafting, not anything to do with God or anything like that. But um, so I went. And on that trip, um, I had a really good time. But was one night, there was a young gentleman named BJ. And he was like kind of one of the youth helpers. And he, I was just sitting like on the mountain, we were in Georgia somewhere, and he came over and like started talking to me about salvation, and he was like, Ludy, because my nickname was Ludy Bug. Um, I'm bringing that back. <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that. Ludy Bug. Ludy Ludy bug. Go ahead. That's Either Ludy or Bug, but any, he was like, right have you ever, um, you know, have you ever thought about being saved? And I remember plain as day, I was like, absolutely not, BJ. I am not getting saved because... If I get saved and then I mess up, I'm gonna go to hell. Like I'm, I know that I'm gonna, I'm not perfect, and I'm, st you know, I'm still, I'm gonna mess up. And he was like, no, <laughs> you know. And he explained the gospel for me for to the for the first time my entire life at 18. And when he explained it to me, I was like, yeah, I absolutely, yeah, I want that. I want all of that. And I got saved that night. And it was, it's just so born and raised here. I love this. I told you I was gonna do this. Yeah, no, do it. Born and raised right here. Meg's County, right? Mm -hmm. Meg's County's finest. Yeah. Kayla Atkins. Yeah. <clears throat> she, born and raised here, had not heard the gospel till she was 18 years old. Like the gospel, the good news, Jesus loves you. He wants to rescue you out of darkness. To me, that blows my mind. And you know, we talk all the time like, oh, you know, there's a church on every corner. Just because there's a church on every corner doesn't mean everybody knows the gospel. Yeah. So, and sometimes people can spend years in church and still never hear the gospel. Yeah. So it's an amazing thing. So. There was one more. When I was in high school, I was, I was not the most pleasant person to be around, especially for my poor mother. And I remember, um, like, I would just be so unhappy and, like, upset and just angry and hateful. And I would just be like, Mom, I'm not happy. Like, I'm not happy. I thought I needed to see, like, a psychologist or something. And I was like, there's just something missing. There's some, I'm not fulfilled. There's something that is missing. And I look back at that now, and I know that that was Jesus. Like, I didn't. But, so even not knowing God, never hearing the gospel, like, my soul, I felt knew that something was missing. Like, I knew, yeah. and I would still cry out to him. So to me, that it's was. Good. It's good. Yeah. It's in every person, yeah. whether you know Absolutely. the gospel or not. Yeah. There's a longing for God. Um, uh, well, going on into this a little bit, because really the main topic we're going to hit today is, is marriage and relationship a little bit. We're, we are getting there. But on, on question two, you know, I asked, what did you have to overcome in accepting Christ or in following him? I want Josh to kind of talk a little bit about that um, and also talk 
tell a little bit about, just so you don't forget, I know you're as flighty as I am. Tell a little bit about, um, you know, yeah, when you received started, Christ. Yeah, she started uh, kind of talking, and that kind of reminded me of also about the my same time. Story. We we about the same time. Yeah, we so we, we, share, share all of, that. we went over all this last night, so I'm trying to rehash it in my mind. Um, but yeah, I I was raised in church. I knew of God. Um, I'd seen God in in some people in my life. Just what you know had he had done for them and through them. And, um, so I'm, I'm 19 years old and I, I had always kind of battled back and forth. I had, uh, friends at that time that were not living for God that could have cared less about God, that good guys. And that was part of my struggle was, was separating, was, was doing, and I didn't, I did a terrible job of that even after I got saved. But I, I had a hard time because my friends at the time, they felt like family to me. So I, I kept, even after I got saved, I got saved at 19, which is like Jay said, around, I was 19, I think he got saved at 15, 16, 14. So fairly close in age at the time that we got saved. Um, and I even remember his brother, who I was good friends with at the time, you know, tell me about you know, him getting saved. I was like, man, that's awesome, you know, because at that time, I, I was on fire. I, I, in my heart and in my mind, I was on fire for Christ at 19, but I couldn't separate in my mind and in my heart. I, it was hard for me to, to break free from, the, uh, from my friends, from that group that, that, uh, that continually you know, wanted nothing to do with God. They were respectful and they were you know, good friends, but I, I couldn't separate. I kept, kept saying, well, well just you know, God, I, I can't. I can't on the outsider's perspective, yeah. though, too, like with the friends, with the friends, yeah. like we're talking thick as thieves. I mean, I I know the whole crew, and like these guys were like, not just like friends, family, but yeah, like, like family. family. Yeah. So I think for Josh, and this is what someone needs to hear today, is like your surroundings will ultimately dictate your future. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And so young people as well listen because I, I knew he loved Christ. And I can remember. I don't know if you, you may have, was going to share the story. So I'm sorry if I just stole this Go moment. But the, the flag football it. tournament, I can remember. Yeah. It was shortly after I got saved and was really kind of thrust into church and really co -ed active. Flag football tournament. Yeah, co it was co-ed flag football. It was pretty Hard hardcore. Car. It was hardcore. It really was. We got a little um, bobblehead trophy. <laughs> first place. You did get first place. We got first place. That's so lame. You guys stacked that. <laughs> anyway, um, but I can remember at that flag football tournament that he came up to me kind of randomly behind me and, and uh, kind of put his arm around me and said, hey, man, I'm really proud of you for what you did. And, and as a 14-year-old, as a you know, uh, looking to this 19-year-old, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. You know, I felt so good about a young person that I looked up to that I thought was cool. He's still super cool. I mean, this guy right here. But I thought, man, this guy is noticing something in my life. And for me, it was so impactful. And even, even for young people, or even older people today, don't discount like your statements to people and what it does. Because I'm telling you, that is a defining moment for me as a teenager when someone come up to me and said, hey, I'm really, I'm really proud of you and the decision you made. Um, whether he was living on the wagon or off the wagon at the time, it still meant a lot uh, yeah. to me. So. And, and it really hit home for me because I love the Lord. And I mean, I, I had that, that moment in church where I just kind of decided like this is, uh, I, got, I was at a church where you get baptized the second you get saved or you're not saved. So, uh, but, but at the time I, I just knew I was gonna follow Christ. I had had that tugging, that pulling my whole life, I felt like, but I never really just made that conscious decision like today's the day. So I made that decision. And you know, years after that, I kept, like with the friends, I kept saying, I can't, God, I cannot, they're like my family. So, in, you know, in order to, you know, compensate or whatever, I would say, well, I'll just influence them. And as a young Christian, a great idea. as a young, yeah, a young cat, terrible idea, you know, because these guys were like, yeah, that's cool. You know, they respected it, but they wanted nothing to do with that. And, and, and I couldn't understand that. And I couldn't grasp it. So they're, quick story, but, um, so we're going to watch, it was when Passion of Christ come out, I don't even know what year that was, but it's actually been a while now, so I'm a young Christian, I think I was in my early 20s at this time, still battling, still, still straddling the fence of right and wrong, uh, still doing stuff I should not be doing, but loving Jesus at the same time, so we go to see Passion of the Christ, I took, I had two tickets I got from my church to take to my friends, and I thought, I'm going to take because I saw that I'd already seen the movie. So I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my two friends, my two unsaved friends, good guys, and we're going to go watch this movie, and they're gonna, their lives are going to be changed. They're going to weep just like I did when I watched the movie, 
and fall on their knees. So we got to watch the movie, long story short. Because that's uh, how it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, just that yeah. simple. It was just, just as I am playing on the credits rolling. But uh, so we go see the movie, and I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm crying during the movie again. I mean, if I watched it right now, I'd be weeping like a baby. But so we sit through the whole movie, and, you know, I didn't really, wasn't really looking at them the whole time. And they're, mind you, these are my two best friends at the time. So we get in the car, and I'm, they're like, yeah, man, thanks for taking us. Up. They're like, I hated that movie. That was <laughs> terrible. And I was sitting in the back seat. They, those two were up front, and I was in the back. And that, that really was like a pivotal, like, like, wow, that really hit me. Like, wow, these guys, not only do they not don't get it, and, and mind you, eventually one of them did get it, yeah. Cruzel, uh, just not long ago. But, um, yeah, that was that moment where I really realized, like, I can't, I can't be around my friends any longer. Uh, but I continued to hang out with my friends because at that time I was, you know, just a young, weak Christian who, you know, did what, whatever his buddies was doing at the time. Um, but that was one of those moments where I really, it really hit me, like, what am I doing with these friends? They, they watch a movie like that and, or they see what Christ did for them, you know, in plain view, and, and they still, like, no, no, we're good. That's, that was the weirdest, dumbest movie I've ever seen. So. Right. Anyway, that, total was, that was a big moment for and me. And I know the struggle that, that you went through for years with, with your friends. And I know that a lot of people deal with that. Like, man, I, I don't have any friends. But I, I think that it's very important to realize, like, going through that, that you, you have to realize at some point, like, Jesus is more important even than my friends and the friendships that I have. And do I, do I want to live right and let him take me through this or continue to go back into this, into this sin, into this struggle? And I mean, how many years, how many years were you just like torn, like back and forth? I know that at one point in time, you just went totally. Yeah, well, uh, from 19 till I'd say probably 23 or 24, because at that time I was 21 when I did my first missionary trip to Haiti. And I, at this time, still missionary trips, still hanging out with my buddies when I get back, still trying to influence them, but all the while just kind of getting pulled this other direction. I, I was torn inside. And... Um, yeah, it, it went on for years until I finally uh, got to the place where I just, I had beat myself up so much and uh, given so much <laughs> ammunition to Satan. I was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I just ran from God. I didn't turn and walk. I ran, mm -hmm. um, ran far, as far as I could for years and years and years. Um, and that, that, uh, that was at a place, uh, probably the darkest place I'd been. I was living up in Huntington, and, you know, at that time, it was like Las Vegas for me. I <laughs> thought it was the coolest, you know. Huntington, Vegas. Out at, yeah, just burning the candle at both ends. I mean, were there any clubs involved? Yeah. Oh, were there clubs involved? Club and hard, I yeah. I mean, just yeah, clubbing. Just every four totally. to five nights a week. Totally. Yeah. Right, burning the candle at both giving, ends. Giving plasma to support my lifestyle plasma. at the time. <laughs> I've thought about doing that recently, actually, just for a random guitar. I yeah. Do they still do that? Yeah, they still, I think they do. Sweet. But anyway, yeah, it was, it was a rough time. I was living it up, but, and still, mind you, I still had God in my heart. I, I still would think of God often, and I had people really, you know, I would, I was a nurse at the time, and was taking care of people that would speak life into me about God, and, and I knew what they were talking about, but I, I was so wrapped up in, in my own selfishness and in my own world, I didn't really understand, you know, like how severely far I was from God at that time. Because I, I just couldn't couldn't get over the fact that I couldn't God could not forgive me. Because uh, part part of the you know like Kayla said the church experience for me was you know I've gone too far I've done too much you know how could God forgive me and that's kind of where I was at uh, during that stretch of time I just I I'd, I'd ran so far I, I kept running further because you know in my mind the further I get but the whole time. God was right behind me just waiting for me to turn around, you know. Yeah. I, I could have run, you know, as far as the east is from the west. I could have run, it doesn't matter where you go, God was just waiting for me to turn around. Yeah. And, and that, that time eventually came uh, years later. But it was about eight, eight or so years I, I just ran as far and as crazy as I could. Yeah, and, and, and his story is really a historical story of the prodigal son. You know, we talked about that last night a little bit before we dive into Caleb's journey a little bit more. Um, you know, I think when I look at Josh's life, I see that, you know, you can't outrun God, number one, because I, I, I saw him run for years, and we kind of went on this diametrically opposed journey where yeah. we, we received Christ near the same time, and I, I continued, you know, to live for the Lord in the midst of struggles and all those things, but in the midst of struggle, Josh took, took a U-turn or, you know, just like this trail way off in the desert in the wilderness for, for quite a while. 
Um, and it's just kind of amazing how God brings things back together. And I can remember when he first started coming back to church over here in the, in the little church. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Josh was, was our connection in Haiti. I don't know if maybe you have no idea about that, but uh, he and I went on our first mission trip to Haiti before Carrie ever went down. Uh, it was just like we randomly went down there. Josh had been on a few trips uh, and had some connections, and God had really just done a great work in his life, come back to church, and that was really how Haiti all got started. And you, you think sometimes like, you know, here's someone who is, you know, out clubbing four or five nights a week, living this crazy lifestyle, still knowing what's right, knowing that, that Jesus was there, like, like tugging on him. But then all these years later, you know, come back in. Well, and and it, really, like, it really, whenever um, God, was, God was working the whole time I was gone, he had his hand on me through all this. Because, mind you, a lot of the stuff and the addictions and some of the stuff I was battling and struggling with at the time, I, I shouldn't even be here right now. I really shouldn't. And I'm sure there's probably people in here that can attest to that that have dealt with addiction or any kind of struggle or battle. It's looking back now. I'm like, wow, I really God really had His hand on me. And, and you know, people go through stuff and make decisions, but I look back now. I'm like, God really did work out some crazy things. Yeah. And another quick story. I, I got God got me a job away from away from Huntington, away from Las Vegas, uh, and I was working real far away. And at this time, I. I, everything I knew about Christian music was just kind of like Gaither gospel, kind of hokey. I was like, well, you know, I, I love music, but I, there was, to me, there was, at the time, I thought there's no good Christian music. Well, I got introduced to K-Love on the radio, and on my two, three-hour drives up to where I was working, I just happened to stumble upon this radio station and would pull over, you know, at, and this is when I, I rededicated my life, when I finally came crawling back, the prodigal son, and... Um, and I started listening to this music, and it really touched my heart. And I started, I would just pull over and weep on my way to work, um, realizing what I had done. And, I, and when, I, when I became a Christian, and God never intended me for, for me to go far away and to live right. a crazy lifestyle and to go through right. what, because I'm, I'm still dealing with, with our marriage and with my life now, still dealing with some of the past baggage that I, I gave, you know, to the enemy for years. But... Um, I never knew God's love the way I, I, I felt it when I came back to God. Because the whole time when I became a Christian early on, I felt that power and that love. But until I, I guess I had fallen so far, I never really realized how much God truly loved me, that he could forgive me no matter what I had done and no matter how far I was. He was just, like I said, he was just waiting for me to turn around. That's gospel. And that, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's gospel. Can we give it up for the gospel right there? I mean, that's good. No, that's fine. Um, and I want Kayla to kind of tell a little bit about, um, you guys kind of had a quick, I mean, just like, boom, I love you, let's get married. Um, kind of, let's do that, and then we'll kind of go into the marriage okay. yeah, aspect. Yeah, so, um, I, well, a little bit about, like, for me, I had, I had a hard time. I never, like, fell away because I didn't get saved until much later in my life. But my issue was, like, uh, ex like, believing and understanding and allowing God to love me unconditionally and to know that someone accepted me for how it was, my craziness, my insecurities, my flaws. Like it took me a while to realize that that was real and let him do a work in me. And so many times, like I would just make, still make bad decisions with, with God, with boyfriends, because I was still uh, searching for that in people. Um, and so in December of 2010, I remember like a very, like very divine moment in my floor in college. I would just like had had it. I had been hurt and hurt and I just cried like, all right, God, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to date. I'm not going to do anything until I know that you say that this is the man that you have for me. Um, you know, I've done it my way and I it's just, not, you know, it's not working. And that was in December in 2010. And, and you know, when you you say stuff, but then when you have that moment, you know, like you mean it, like you've made up your mind that yeah, that's it. It's true surrender. Yeah. yeah. And that was how that was. And so in February, so that was December of 2010 and I came home to visit for Christmas and in passing someone introduced me to Josh was just like, Oh, this is Josh. He goes to Haiti. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, kept on walking, went back to Tennessee, didn't think anything of it. But now I thought she was like 16. She looked really young. <laughs> And you were like, yes, this is going to work out fantastic. Yeah, he says that, and then we go on. I'm like, honey, that makes you look like a creep. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Still a creep. 
So in February, um, Josh contacted me. I had put like a video on Facebook, like something that God had put on my heart, like a prayer or something like that. And Gets Josh, him every time, every time. Gets yes, him every time. Yeah, absolutely. Josh wrote me a message on Facebook. So we met in church, but he did contact me on Facebook. But um, True love, true he, love. But when he wrote me, it took me a minute. I was like, who is this guy? So he wrote me on Facebook. And long story short, that was in February. We got married in July of that same year. We dated and engaged. With this, though, do not trust everybody that contacts you on Facebook. <laughs> it's not a great idea. No, no. And in the but beginning, the begin. Honestly, though, like it I was innocent. I promise. Everything we yeah, absolutely. Just, <laughs> I was he, just like, cool I just want to throw that out there for the young people. Yeah. You know no, I mean? he did. And when he wrote me and stuff, like it wasn't even like a relationship type thing. And even after that, um, I told him he could message me on Facebook, but he couldn't have my number. Um, and then when I finally gave him my number, I was like, you're allowed to text me. I'll let you know when you can call me. I love I meant, that. <laughs> I meant, like, I meant it. I was like, I'm not, you know, and I thought that was December. This is February. I thought, oh, no, like I've done too much. God's going to make me wait for years to see if I really meant what I said. This is too soon. And so I was really, really skeptical at first, but then, um, what? <laughs> but, but then she also thought I was of another uh, ethnicity at the time. She, I she thought said, he was so what are you? you? Pretty tall, dark, and I handsome. I like, well, this was in the summertime, so I was pretty dark. Whatever, and anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that there'd be a little weirdness at times. It's okay when you get this much going oh, yeah, on up awkward. here. It's, but honestly, it was our very first, we went to Haiti in um, March, the end of March, beginning of April. And that was when, like, plain as day, I knew God had said, this is the man that you're going to marry. And I didn't do. know that. But. He didn't, because I had been really kind of cold up until then. And so um, he said, this is the man you're going to marry, and you're going to do mission work with him for the rest of your life. And I was like, oh, okay. And on the plane ride home, I shared that with Josh, and he was like, Really? Yeah, really? <laughs> you even like me? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think she liked me at the time. We were just kind of like cool at the yeah. time, not even really, I wouldn't call it dating, just kind of like, hey, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it was, it was so good, that was but April. she kind of floored me with that because the whole time she's just hardcore level four cold, like just like I'm not, you're not, you're not calling me, you're not, you know, I was just like, all right. So well, the moral of this is like girls be totally cold dating. Absolutely. Seriously. Yes. But then Seriously. you can be yes. hot when you get married. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because that was part of my problem for years when I was living the way I was living. I wasn't used to that. It was just, you know, I found a, a, a thing that Josh had kept in his wallet. Um, it was like 10 things listed of what he wanted in a wife. And I found it after we were married. <laughs> and that was on there. And I remember, like, he's, you know, he, I don't know, he, he had said, like, I want to find a girl maybe too raw that won't sleep with me like I want someone who will you know stand their ground and that's a hardcore list yeah. I like sassy that sassy yeah. and I like that yeah, yeah I like that and I, I mean always... girls you need to play like a shut down corner you know what I'm saying I mean shut it down I mean ho ho Holly made me feel so bad when we dated so often listen because yeah, that, that was my weakness it's I didn't not want, a problem yeah, I, didn't, I didn't want a girl that would yeah that it's was not, not a my desire at all yeah. you know that doesn't hey, my heart's if he can't desire. wait you don't want him yeah yeah, anyway, absolutely. So anyway, and we were only dating, engaged, and married in five months. But mind you, neither we had both we had both had sex before then. That was the hardest five months of our entire life. It wasn't easy. <laughs> no, I'm just like it wasn't easy, it's, it's really, but it was important. Good. Like it was something that was really, really important because I'd messed up in that area time after time after time. And I, you know, I just knew like if, if we if we mess up and if we do that, like I'm not like this is this is not what God wants. You know, we want what God wants. So that was hard. So there we we were married in July. We got married in July, and then. Yeah, I mean, what, what I want to do is I want to get right, and then all broke loose. <laughs> broke loose. And then um, we were married. Yeah. So typically, it would be like a yeah, like a, a happy ending from there. No, it got it got terrible. It got worse. It did. I feel like time is flying. Does anybody else feel like that? What time? Are is we it? okay for for ten ten fifteen? Is this okay? Let's yeah, let's we're roll. Almost there. We're almost they can there. wait. We got doors. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, you tell us what you want to say, not even. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um. So, okay, going into the marriage thing, because, you know, some might think, that's a great story. God was there. It's fantastic. Well, he was it, He was there. But sometimes things aren't always that perfect, right. and things aren't always that easy. So, um, you know, going into marriage, you know, I guess I'll just say this, ask this question. Like, have you ever, have you guys ever wanted to quit? Mm -hmm. and, and also with that, maybe we'll go into, like, what, what has kept you going right. with a marriage? Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I know it's like, whoa. No, I don't want to know. no so, so two people got married who loved Jesus with all of their heart but had no idea how to be married. We and both had a lot of baggage. Too. Yeah, we had so much baggage in between the both of our parents, that, and this isn't a knock, but Josh and I have been through 12 marriage and divorces between his father's been married six times and both of my parents have been married three times. So when it came to marriage, we had... We, I mean, we had no example. We had no idea what it was to be a godly husband and a godly wife. So you had kind of two check bags full of baggage, yeah, not absolutely. just like a carry-on. Oh, yeah. oh, I was yeah. loaded down. I had a, yeah. mule, I had a pack mule yeah. with me absolutely. that had all my baggage. Right, check bags. And so yeah. you have two people with all of this baggage who have no idea how to be married. The only thing that we know is that we love Jesus and we, do, we love each other. And other than that, like, it was just, when you get married, I think you find out how selfish you really are. And so we were just two selfish people, and like the whole concept of putting someone's needs above your own, and and try, like we, that was just, you know, that was foreign to us. Yeah. We didn't know how to do that, and um, we tried. And I, I think that we went too long without asking for help. Um, we needed help. We needed a lot of help. Someone to sit down with and to hash things out. Uh, am I, this good? That's great. Okay. No, I mean people need to know. Like, yeah. hey. These people love Jesus. They pray with people, but man, they went through some. Yeah. Yeah. Some our stuff. first yeah. first year, year and a half, was was really a trial, and I mean, we went through we went through yeah. so much. Just we got to the place where we both kind of had grounds for divorce. Yeah. We both were at the place where I was, uh, and men, especially uh, even godly men today, I found, and, and a lot of men here know my story. I've shared it in men's group, and you know probably a lot don't, well, maybe some don't care, but he, I've, I've been through where I took my lifestyle that I had for eight or nine years, came crawling back to Christ, came calling, crawling back to the Father. Well, there's still, I gave the enemy all these years. So when I got, when I rededicated my life and when I gave my life back to Christ, there was still a process for me to work out, to walk out, and still until this day, I'm still walking that out and still trying. But I gave, you know, all my life there. So when we when we met and got married and all that, I still had past issues that I was dealing with. I was fighting, I was battling, and um, when I brought them into the marriage, they they kind of crept back in because I had done away with and, and mind you, I'm talking about you know stuff you see online, stuff you can see on your phone now, uh, and and I pray we pray for our children now that they don't ever have to go through that because I I look at kids now and all the technology that they have at their hands and yeah. and and the means you can get you know, anything you want at any time. And, and, and I took, you know, a battle of addiction and, and, and that went into a world of pornography and things that, and I'm just being real and honest because that's what we're here to do. But, yeah, man, that's right. You know, I, I battled with that for years. And even into our marriage, I was battling that and really falling and stumbling. And she had no clue. But when you get married, the two become one. So when I was battling that, I was unknowingly, putting strain and stress on her that she didn't even understand. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, she was going and dealing with issues of her own too because my, my negatives and my battles were kind of counter, yeah, they uh, were dealing with her insecurities. They were kind of fighting each other. Yeah. So then we had like this, this big powder keg that just kept blowing up daily. Yeah. You and know, this is mind you before we had children or anything. Yeah. And, and we got to a place, honestly, to where <coughs> his struggle, like it counteract, like it was my insecurities and all of that. We just got to a place to where we really didn't like each other. We loved each other. We loved Jesus, but we were. Yeah, we'd be in here raising our hands yeah. on Sundays and Wednesdays, and we didn't even talk and hated each yeah. other on throughout that, the week. But I, I always and it doesn't be, discount though that this this no, wasn't real. I always no, no, want to say that we, we loved Jesus, like our heart and our worship. That that was true and that was genuine. We just didn't like each other, not because we didn't want to. We were just so full of mess and just nastiness and baggage that we didn't know how to be married. And so it got to the point where we had, I mean, if there could have been cameras in our home, somebody, honestly, it would have been like, these people, you know, we had really bad <laughs> No fights. drama. I mean, no yeah, drama. No. You know, and so it just got to the place where, you know, but honestly, both of us could have walked away. Biblically, we could have walked away. Um, and it came down to Josh coming home one day and said, you know, he hugged me and, and cried, and he said, you know, yes, we could. Biblically, we could. But if we live a lifestyle that says, 
I want what God wants, and I want to please God. And we, we, you ask yourself, yourself, does God want you to get a divorce? No, he doesn't. No, that's how we felt. No, he did not. So what that meant for us was, well, we don't know how to be married, and we don't know what's next, but we're willing to fight with everything in us to make our marriage work. Yeah. And, um, and this is, this and is on, on that, too, though, like, I want you to know, like, how serious it was, like, and if, yeah. We're, we're, we're putting it out there. Yeah, he knows so like, a lot about us. You know, Josh, Josh calls me, and he's, he's like, he's, he's done. I'm, I'm done. I'm freaking done. You know, and I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, I, you know at that moment, I, I don't have any words of, like, wisdom and all that. I'm just kind of, because we've been Not dealing with it for a counselor. while, and he was just like, this is it. And I'm just kind of like, man, this, this is going to be terrible. Like, this is it, you know, because I loved both of them. I knew both of them. I knew their story, yeah. and, like, I, I'm, I'm praying for them, and I knew people were praying for them, but, like, that's, that's the intensity of it was. It wasn't like hey, we need to work on some stuff. It's like, let's do this. Well, and, and, it, and it came to that point where we, where we had to reach out because that's part of the, you know, the humbling part of that whole ordeal was reaching out and letting people that we loved and knew that, uh, that helped us through that, that we, you know, we need help and we can't do this. We couldn't, I, I, you know, I don't understand how couples do it today without Christ at the center because it's, it's hard. We had two people, you know, and a lot of people don't have Jay and Holly's story where you're, you know, high school sweethearts, and you grow up, and, and that, that's, that's actually the way, what God wants, that's what he intends, but, you know, in today's society and world, and even where we live, you know, a lot of people have baggage, a lot of people go into it with that, but I, the, the great thing about what we went through, and what we overcame, was it broke a cycle, I, I, I had, I had always seen running, and I had always seen my dad quitting, and giving up on marriage, and just, you know, wow, that, that didn't work out, next one, you know, but I got to that place where I'm like, no, this isn't what, you know, because in my, my flesh, I wanted to, I was like, I'm done. I, I don't, you know, she's crazy. I don't want to deal with this. She was a little crazy. But, right. You know, I, I, was, jo- I, was, I always a, joke like yeah. this, like girls can have 50 reasons why they don't want to be with a man. All guys have to say, all she's dudes crazy. have to say, she's, she's crazy, crazy, bro. You know, and and everybody, jer- everybody understands you know, it. They get you know, it. You know, we, I was a jerk. She was crazy. So just, you know, but we got to that place where, you know, where it was now or never, and we just made that conscious decision, just like when we, I, I chose to follow Christ and then chose to, to give my life back to him, we made that decision like we've got, we've got to, you know, we, if we want what Christ wants, if we, want, we say we love God, God didn't intend, God didn't bring us together for us to get divorced. So, and mind you, I know people have gone through divorce, and it's okay, there, there's redemption, there's things that can come out of that. Amen. And, Amen. you know, part of our story is, is overcoming that and the blessing we, we, we had from that, from obedience, uh, we have two beautiful, wonderful children now because of that. And, and just a story to tell and, and to reach people with, and yeah. it's just great. I think that, I think what I would want to share or like to tell people if you're struggling or if you're home and you're miserable and you think that like you can't talk to anybody about it or no one would understand, I wanna encourage you to please reach out, please try to get help because you would be so surprised how many people are going through that or have been through that. And had it not been for the person that, and God uses people, but hadn't been for the person that God sent to us to help us that we could call in the middle of the night and screaming and yelling and, and her just listening to us and really just being there for us, getting us through those hard times and God giving her wisdom, um, we wouldn't have made it if it wouldn't yeah. have been for, for that help. Yeah. And that, that was the... Yeah, we tried to work it out on our own. And even Yeah, with, we were at know. the place where we couldn't even have a conversation. Like, we couldn't talk to each other without it turning we had, into... Yeah, and we had people here coming up to us and praying with us during service while we're in, probably having no clue what, yeah. what we were even going through, but just being led by the Holy Spirit or, you know, God touching them to, like, it was all over us that we needed help. Yeah. We just didn't know, you know, we... But the thing that absolutely kept us going, or, or you know, what you asked, definitely was, um, it was, I think that we, I know that we both took it very seriously, the commitment and the vow that we made to God when we got married and to each other. And, you know, we didn't know how to do it or what was going to happen or how hard it was going to be, but we wanted to stay married, the commitment to yeah. one another. And it takes two. While they're talking, I, I wanted to kind of chime in a little bit and say that it, it, it took two. You know what I mean? It wasn't one fighting the other night. It was two. And, and that's, that's key. And, and like they said, there is, you know, for those who have been through divorce, because a lot of people have, you know, there's redemption, there's restoration, there's all those things. Because sometimes, sometimes the story, you know, it's not happily ever after. You know what I'm saying? Like, we realize that within the church. And that's what the church has done really a, a terrible job at throughout the years is, is realizing, like, that people go through hurts, they go through pain, they go through struggle, stuff doesn't work out. 
Life can be crappy sometimes, but that Jesus still is. You know, he still is in the, in the hard stuff. He still is when you don't understand. He still is when it doesn't work out. You know, he still is at, at the ending when it's just like, you know, wow, this isn't the Jesus moment I thought I was going to have. But that also that he can restore and he can revive. So I, I think through it all, like, we just got to realize that, that Jesus is the source. And that especially when, in regards to marriage, that when both of you are looking to that source, it will, it will. And it's it will the hardest thing we've ever done. Absolutely. Marriage is the hardest thing I, in my 30 years of living. 30. <laughs> my 37 years of living, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. 37, you feel so would, good for 37. Oh, yeah, I'll feel terrible. Well, <laughs> for her, it's the, it's the hardest thing we've ever gone through, and, and now we're, we're dealing with children, which is also <laughs> extremely difficult and hard, but, but a beautiful, wonderful thing. And um, it's just, it's crazy. What, without God at the center, without Christ at the center, there's no way it would ever work for yeah. us. Not only, not, you know, I know, I know un, unsaved people that have happy marriages and, and it works, but like for, especially with our personalities and like we were talking about with some of the baggage, I don't know how any, there's a reason two thirds of marriages don't work. Yeah. Uh, and, and even in the church, it's hard, but, yeah. um, but the key is, it's just like Jay always preaches, it's about consistency. Yeah. We were consistently fighting in the first year or two, but then we, then we got to the place where we're consistently working and consistently trying and consistently trying to, you know, please God. And, and without and obedience, you, you know, without faith, you can't please God. And there's so. been one thing that's been constant, even, I mean, yeah, through our marriage and through the trials and everything that we went through, and even what we're going through right now, God has never changed. He's been yeah. the same. He's been right there with us through all right. of it. And that's the only way that we've gotten through any of it. Right. And that, that we both know that. And like we have that peace that no matter what we go through, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, because we're two people who are committed to one another and committed to following Jesus. Not to like build us up or anything. It took years for God to make us and to mold us into what we are and who we are yeah. today. Um, that's good, man. No, that's good. Because, I, once again, I think people have this idea, like, oh, it's so great. Not everybody has that story. Like, you know, we dated at birth and, you know, got married later <laughs> and stuff. I mean, you know, not everybody has that story. And I think people need to understand that, that everybody's story is different, and, and that's okay. And that there's beauty in struggle, and there's beauty in pain, and there's beauty in, in these difficult things. And, and that God wants to use, you know, your mess, really, for ministry. Yeah. And, and he wants to use that, too. And I, I can tell you the countless people that, that Josh and Kayla both in their own arenas as well have helped people um, with certain things. So I think that's what's important is realizing, too, and I hope that the story's a lot changed that. I hope what people get from it, too, is that, listen, we're not perfect, and it's okay. You know, embrace that. Embrace the imperfection. And for so many years, you know, you see... You see families, and it's like, oh, it's, oh, it's the Atkinses. Look at them. Oh, they're so fantastic. Oh, what? Well, they just, they were cussing each other last night. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I think that in the church world sometimes, man, it just gets so fakey and such a facade, and like, we look all nice, and everything's good. When no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. People go through stuff. And yes, even, even when we come in here, and people are lifting their hands, and sometimes people are lifting their hands through pain, and yeah. through struggle, and through trial, and it's, it's not always wonderful. And, and I think that's what we really need to understand about a life with Jesus. But, but a life with Jesus is always better, too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Right? When all else fails, amen. Yeah, and God has been able to use our story. We've been able to sit down with other couples and counsel with other couples and share, you know, what we've been through and how God got us through it. So. Yeah, and I need them because let me tell you something. I'm a terrible counselor. <laughs> I mean, people, they think because you're a pastor, like, you do counseling? I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right no, now. No, he's terrible. I am a terrible, uh, he'll, he'll tell you, I'm a terrible counselor. It's like, man, you know, I'll pray for you. I don't know. I preach. I Jesus. preach. Jesus. He just gives the typical Jesus pastor. is the way. Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, How do we do this, uh, Jesus? Or do this with Jesus? <laughs> there's, this, there's this lady that you should go talk to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thankfully we. Right. You know, I just dished it off. Yeah. I was like. I know a person. No, that, that was meant to that happen. That was meant that to was happen, meant to absolutely. Happen. Exactly, yes. man. There's things that you do. And, and, and here's the thing, too. It's about embracing what, you, what you're not supposed absolutely. to do. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I had to do that a long time ago. Like, there's just certain things I'm just not good at. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Certain things Josh is not good at. You have a perfect wife. Amen. So you've never been, you never, you know. Okay, so we're good. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and have Kyle come on up. 
you're going to feel what it feels like to be up here with Kyle while he's playing. It's, it, it intensifies. It's crazy. I've been waiting for this moment. Right. Also, real quick before we go, if anyone or any marriage is struggling or would want to talk to us more about like our more of our story, more details or anything, we're definitely always open for that. Wait a second. That's I awesome. Sign up for that one. That's awesome. I love it. Last question, which was confusing. And we're going to briefly touch on this. We can maybe like a line on this one. And I, we went over this question like five times, and they, I don't understand. And it was so funny, like a year and a half ago, the same people like didn't understand the question either. So I'm going to try to, it was, we're, it's, we're, it's preacher terminology. Yeah, we, we can't help it. We say things. It's just, uh, so, so for you, you know, Josh, you know, or Kayla, and you can answer together separately. Uh, it doesn't matter. But, you know, how, how do you guys, this is how I reworded it. Describe how you can use your story uh, to influence others. Well, and we all have a story, and each person here has a story. I have a weird, crazy story. She's got a crazy story. But through all the craziness and through, you know, everyone's story and their testimony and their witness, you, you have kind of a sphere of influence where you can, you can touch someone. Yeah. You know, I can't help everyone with everything, but there's certain areas that, you know, things that I've been through that I can't help. And, and the same with her, you know, in an influence in that way. That's kind of how I view this man here has influenced me in a lot of ways and uh, just helped me in, in ways he probably will never know. But um, it's always good to have, and I've learned this as a young man, to have the right influences around. Uh, and even now, to have the right influences around you at all times right. and, and, and to keep focus on that. Well, one thing about influence too is like we were talking about last night. Sometimes influence looks a little different for every person. And uh, I shared a little bit about like with, with my life, and, you know, I get to go and speak places and, and you know, Holly's home, like wrestling the four children, you know, it's just pandemonium at the house. And I might be speaking somewhere and people are like, oh, it's a great message. You're so fantastic. And all these things. And Holly's at the house where it's like, ah. You know, but, but it's their, their, her influence is different, and it's about embracing, like, your influence. Like, she's home, like, raising four children, like, pouring into them, you know, washing dishes and clothes and all that stuff. It's like, sometimes you can look at your life and be like, well, my influence isn't as important. I couldn't do what I do without, without her. And just like, you know, Josh couldn't do what he does without Kayla. Kayla couldn't do it without, without Josh. And what I, what I meant by that question is, like, influence looks different. It's not always a microphone up here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that their influence will far outweigh what they do here today. You know, you, you'll see that, but uh, what, you're seeing them today, but their influence goes out past this. It's out past this. It's about influencing people every single day, and that looks a little different for everyone, but um, I'm so grateful for their story. Let's give it up for them for, for what they've done today. If we could, though, let's just stay right here. We, you, you just remain seated. Um, I just want to pray today, and I want to pray over the congregation and and I know Josh and Kayla are going to be praying for, for married couples as well today um, because this does have a lot to do with relationships. But just know this, if you're here and you've come to church, maybe you're visiting, maybe you've been here before, you've never really looked at it like this. These are imperfect people. I'm an imperfect person. But Jesus has done a work and is continuing to do a work. So don't ever think that you're too far. I've saw this guy run really far after saying, yeah, I love Jesus. I've seen him run through fields and through mountains and over to the other side. But God's done a great work in his life and brought him back. And so I want every person here, no matter if you've never been born again, you've never prayed and invited Christ in your life, you've never had a relationship, or whether you're a believer and you're just kind of like, you know, you're just kind of on the fence. Understand Jesus Christ loves you and he is passionate about you. He's so passionate about you, so very much. And the story of the prodigal son, you know, the, the, the son goes out and uses all his, his livelihood and uh, you know, takes all the inheritance and spends it all on this worthless living. And, and as soon as the son comes back and starts going back to the father's house, the father sees him because the father's been looking. The father's been looking for him. And that's how God does to us. No matter how far we get, God's looking. He's, he's searching. Are they coming back? Oh, I just wanted to turn. All throughout the scripture, what you see with God is turn to me. For Old Testament, New Testament, Repent, turn to me. You gotta turn to God. And when you turn to God, he does it. He does the work in your life. So maybe you're thinking, I can't. That's where you need to be. No, you can't. You can't, but God can. God can. He can take that mess and he can truly turn it into ministry in your life.
this, if you would. Let's pray today. Father, I pray right now for every, every, every married couple, God, every couple in this place, Lord, every relationship, Lord, that's here. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would touch the heart and life of each and every one, God. I pray that you would strengthen them, Lord. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray this word and this message has encouraged them, Lord God.